In our previous topic, we were expanding double brackets. So I was taking two linear factors, linear because the highest power is just x, not x squared nor x cubed, two linear factors, multiplied them together, and expanded the brackets using this grid. Remember, there were always some like terms that we could collect to give us our positive 5x. Now, when we expanded these linear factors, it gave us a polynomial. More importantly, this one gave us a quadratic polynomial. That means the highest power is 2. If the highest power was 3, it would be a cubic polynomial. If the highest power was 4, it would be a quartic polynomial. But we're just working with quadratic polynomials today. And actually, that is where our next topic is going to start. So let's take this exact same quadratic polynomial and let's start us off with our next topic. So we have here a quadratic polynomial, the highest power is 2. And now I want to do the inverse. I want to find out what multiplies with what to give this quadratic polynomial. So for example, 24. If I factorise it, 2 multiplied by 12, or 3 multiplied by 8, or 4 multiplied by 6. But what multiplied by what, what factor multiplied by which factor, gives me this quadratic polynomial? We're still going to use our grid, but this time we can fill in different things. We know what goes inside our grid now. We have the 24x squared, we have the negative 36, and we know that these two will collect to create that positive 5x. But the question is, what are the factors? What two things multiplied to give me this quadratic polynomial? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to factorise our quadratic and create our linear factors. So now I've got a polynomial and I've placed it into my grid. This polynomial is x squared, add 9x, add 20. But what linear factors multiply to make this polynomial? We can start with x squared. That means x multiplied by x. So this must be x multiplied by x. Let's move on to this plus 4x then. x multiplied by positive 4 gives me positive 4x. So we've already filled in three entries of our grid. And then how about this positive 5x? This x must be multiplied by positive 5 to give me positive 5x. And let's check that works with a positive 20. Positive 5 multiplied by positive 4 gave me positive 20 over there. So that works too. To factorise this quadratic, I need x add 4 multiplied by x add 5. And that's my quadratic factorised. Give this next one now a go yourself, pausing the video and filling in the linear factors. So you should have the same thing here to get your positive 4x. This is the only term that has changed from positive 5 to positive 6. And that's actually affected our positive 20 going to positive 24. But back to our linear factors. So this x must be multiplied by positive 6. Your linear factors are x add 4, this time multiplied by x add 6. That's your polynomial factorised. When I increase my coefficients from 1x squared to 2x squared, Two x squared means two multiplied by x multiplied by x. So I can regroup two x multiplied by x. Remember, multiplication is commutative. So two x multiplied by x is exactly the same as x multiplied by two x. I've just switched the order around. But back to these one, this one. Give it a go yourself, pause the video, and see what you get for each of these different grids. So the answers you should have are x multiplied by positive 4 to give me positive 4x, 2x multiplied by positive
positive 3. 2 multiplied by 3 is positive 6, and multiply by the x as well. We also have positive 3 multiplied by positive 4 to give me positive 12. And then there's the alternative. 2x multiplied by positive 2. 2 times 2 is positive 4, and multiplied by the x as well. x multiplied by positive 6 gives me positive 6x. And just to check, positive 6 multiplied by positive 2 is positive 12. So this exact same polynomial, 2x squared, add 10x, add 12, the 10 coming from here and here, had two possible linear factorizations. I could do it this first way. 2x add 4 multiplied by x add 3. I switched my 2x and my x, but did that necessarily mean the blue and the grey bracket completely switched around? Not at all. 2x squared add 10x add 12 could also be factorised into x add 2 multiplied by 2x add 6. So that was one polynomial with two different factorizations, depending on where I placed my 2x. That's much like in numbers, where, for example, you might have the number 24. And there are multiple ways of factorizing that. So, for example, 24 is equal to 2 times 12. It's also equal to 3 times 8. It's also equal to 4 times 6. And this polynomial was 2x add 4 multiplied by x add 3. It was also x add 2 multiplied by 2x add 6. But back to our numbers, we also know that there are numbers, for example, 17, which is just 1 times 17. There is no further way of factorising that as uh, 3. That's just 1 times 3. There's no further way of factorising that. Is that the same in algebra? Are there polynomials where you cannot factorise any further beyond that? Well, let's try this one. The only thing I've changed here is placing 24 instead of this 12. Give this one a go yourself now. And let's see what happens. You might put 2x here and the x here to get your 2x squared, positive 4 to get your positive 4x, positive 3 to get your positive 6x. But then that 24 doesn't work. Positive 3 and positive 4 does not give you positive 24. You might say multiplication is commutative, so I could put instead of x, I could put 2x here, and instead of 2x I might put x here. But I'll tell you now that it's not going to work. This particular polynomial, add 10x, add 24, cannot be broken down into linear factors. Much like the number 17 was 1 times 17, this polynomial cannot be reduced any further. It is just 1 times itself. There are no linear factors that you can create from it. However, every question that I will ask you in your upcoming worksheet will be factorizable, even the ones with negative coefficients here. So this is the exact same polynomial that I've put down three times. And just to remind ourselves, negative 2x squared means negative 2 multiplied by x multiplied by x, x squared. And there are a couple ways we can put that into our grid. Negative 2 multiplied by x and then multiplied by x. Multiplication is commutative, so I can switch that around. x multiplied by negative 2x. I could even place my negative in front of the x. So I could say 2x multiplied by negative x. Again, multiplication is commutative, so that could be... Two. Okay, that's four different ways to factorise this particular polynomial. So pause the video and give it a go yourself.
So your answer should be negative 2x add 4 multiplied by x subtract 3. x subtract 2 multiplied by negative 2x add 6. Negative x add 2 multiplied by 2x subtract 6. And 2x subtract 4 multiplied by negative x add 3. Take a note of the similarities between these two and these two. How does the negative sign affect it? And which constants remain in the same position? So in summary, we whizzed through quite a few different polynomials here. These two had unique factorizations. There was no other way I could break these polynomials down into any other factors. This polynomial I could factorize in two different ways, and this polynomial I could factorize in four different ways. So these had non-unique factorizations. Much like the number 24 or the number 48, there are so many different ways you can multiply to create 24 and to create 48. We even came across a polynomial which could not be factorized at all. And this was very much like our prime numbers. 17, you can't really factorize it. It's just 1 times 17. 3 is just 1 times 3. Like I said, in the worksheet that you'll be going to be using today, you will be looking at polynomials with unique and non-unique factorizations. There will be no one that cannot be factorized, but just know that they do exist. All right, straight on to your worksheet.